Thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, sorry, the realities of a college campus. <laughs> yeah, this morning. No, you are fine. We've been trying to figure everything out too. So guys, I'm gonna go ahead and let her just take it away. This is Dorita Dawkins, Ratcliffe Dawkins, and she is gonna be speaking to you this morning about sports administration. Good morning, everybody. Um, so my name is Dorita. Um, I work at the University of Arkansas. Um, you can't really tell, but that's the parking lot out in front of the football stadium. So my office is in the football stadium. Um, I've been here at the University of Arkansas for five and a half years. Nice ponytail under the witch hat, nice. Um, <laughs> but I've been here for, again, five and a half years. Um, I came to the University of Arkansas from UAB, which is the University of Alabama at Birmingham. Um, I started working in college athletics in 1994, so been in a long time, um, about 28 years of working in college sports. When I first started, I was at Virginia Tech, and there I was an academic advisor for football, men's and women's basketball student athletes, and then moved into what in those days was called life skills, which was uh, career development and helping student athletes get out and do community service and those kinds of things. Um, and then I left uh, Virginia Tech in the summer of 1999 and moved to Kentucky, where I worked at, the, uh, at Eastern Kentucky University and then later was the athletics director at a small school um, in the state capital of Frankfurt, Kentucky State University, which is a historically Black college. Um, and was there for three and a half years before moving to Alabama. So I've done a little bit of everything in college athletics um, from an internal standpoint, uh, academic advising, life skills. I was a compliance um, officer for lots of years. So NCAA uh, rules compliance, which meant I kind of lived with a compliance manual, which was about 435 pages when I was doing it. Um, and, um, been to a whole lot of games over that, uh, over those 28 years. Um, I am from Virginia originally. Um, so this isn't my part of the country, a little further west than I ever thought I would live. Um, I grew up about 20 minutes from Virginia Beach. Um, so I am uh, a, a coastal girl. So being way inland now. Um, I became interested in working in athletics sort of by happenstance. I, I tell young people all the time, kind of what we plan to do and what, where we end up might not be the same and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Um, I went to college uh, to get a degree in medical technology because I thought I wanted to be a hematologist, which basically means just looking at blood cells under microscopes a lot. Um, and not talking to other people. And now I talk to people pretty much for a living. Um, so again, I went to James Madison University as an undergrad in the mountains of Virginia and um, majored in medical technology, ended up with a double major in medical technology and psychology and a minor in English. Went on to Virginia Tech to pursue a PhD in clinical psychology. Um, and while there I started tutoring in their athletic department. Um, coach Frank Beamer was the football coach at the time. They created a job for me. Um, and one day I was a graduate assistant. The next day I had a full-time job and that was from August 8th to August 9th of 1994. Um, and I thought I would do that until I finished my degree program or figured out what I wanted to do. Um, and again, here I am 28 years later still doing the same thing. Um, I do believe I told people that college athletics found me. I, I didn't look for it as a career path um, because I didn't know it was a real opportunity. You know, all I thought about relative to sports at that time, and I've always been a big sports fan, was coaches, you know, um, and maybe some administrative people uh, in terms of secretaries, etc. I didn't know all of the job uh, opportunities that were available in college sports. So 
um, I did it, aspire to it. And uh, probably about five years into working in, in college athletics, I couldn't imagine doing anything else. Um, in my 28 years, I have worked for, gosh, five, seven, nine, I've worked for 10 different athletic directors. Um, and each time there was a change, I kind of dusted off my resume um, and got ready to look for a new job um, because that's the reality in our business. Um, when a head coach changes or an athletic director changes, the people who work for those, uh, work directly with those people tend to change too. So um, I was always ready to pivot to the next thing and, um, but it was always, what's the next school? Because I couldn't imagine not working with student athletes um, every day. So um, something that I did not plan to do when I was your age is what I have been doing pretty much my entire adult life. Um, so I say that to say, have a plan, but be super flexible because you never know, you know, what life will bring you with opportunities you didn't realize um, would be out there that come to you. Um, so I, I need you to get ready because I'm going to need some questions. Okay. 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 I, I saw the ponytail. <laughs> you're, you're hard to miss, bro. I mean, what can I tell you? <laughs> so um, education and skills required for my job. So um, probably the most important skill I think for my job is the ability to communicate well. And that covers a number of things. The, the biggest part of communication um, in my uh, estimation is being able to listen. Um, if you're not listening well, you don't know what the appropriate response is. You don't know what tools you should use to respond. Uh, or if you should respond at all, um, because every question asked of you doesn't require an answer. Um, what time? Okay, good question. Um, what the question that came in is what times of year are most busy? Um, everything from August to May. Um, there is a quite honestly, there's no off season in college athletics now. Um, in addition to so here at the University of Arkansas, I now only oversee one sport. I used to have what we count as seven because I was a sport administrator for women's basketball and then our track programs, which uh, include cross country men and women, indoor track men and women, outdoor track men and women. So our track programs count as six sports and then our women's basketball. We were able to hire back a young man who ran track here, who uh, working, was working at the University of Kansas. And when he came back, we um, transitioned the track programs to him. But um, in terms of how college athletics works now, um, our student athletes are on campus from August until June actually uh, with track, baseball and softball wrapping up in the month of June. Um, so if we take vacation in as athletic administrators, pretty much we're like, July's your, your shot. Like you, you need to go in July or you're not going to get it. Um, I also serve on the NCAA Women's Basketball Committee. So that committee is um, who determines who plays in the women's uh, NCAA tournament, NCAA Women's Basketball Tournament. So I have a meeting later today. Um, with uh, part of that committee because I chair the committee on officials um, to get that going. So that means I have three conferences and I just printed this out uh, last night, but three conferences that I am responsible for uh, monitoring as part of the women's basketball committee. So I have the Pac-12, which is UCLA, Oregon, et cetera. Um, the Atlantic Sun, which is Florida Gulf Coast and some smaller schools. Okay, gotcha, Blake. And um, the SWAC, which is, again, an HBCU conference. And so it's my responsibility to watch all the teams in those three conferences and 
um, be able to advocate for whether or not they should be included in the women's basketball tournament. So I'm watching them plus three other conferences, plus pretty much all of the top 25 from November through March uh, so that in March we can see the field uh, for the NCAA tournament. So I've got all that going on, plus the regular things of my job. So I'm the sport administrator for our women's basketball team. So I travel with um, our basketball team to select number of events um, this year. You know, it's a tough to job, but somebody's got to do it. Uh, we have a Thanksgiving tournament in the Virgin Islands. So uh, we'll be going to the Virgin Islands a couple of days before Thanksgiving to play some games down there. Um, and just uh, making sure that sports are staying on track um, with their budgets and those kinds of things. Um, I go to practices. Uh, I serve as a resource for the student athletes on the sports that I work with. Uh, we have a staff member who's out on maternity leave right now. <clears throat> so I'm covering a couple of sports for her, uh, which include our soccer program, which is a uh, top 25, top 10 program um, in the country. Uh, so I will, again, falling on the sword, I got to go to Pensacola, Florida for the SEC tournament um, with them in about a week and a half. Um, so let's see, what educational path would you recommend students take for sport administration? One that gives you skills to be able to think critically, not necessarily a particular degree program. Um, if you look at job descriptions, it'll say things like, um, Sorry, I just got a call. It'll say things like <clears throat> um, sport administration or relevant field um, because the degree program itself is a little less important than it is having the skills that are necessary. Um, now, if you're going to look at working in uh, a business office in sport, then getting, you know, uh, uh, being a CPA, getting a business administration degree, that kind of thing is a little more helpful. But like general administrator like myself, it's more about having the skills to be able to talk to people, to be able to write effectively, to be able to multitask, to be a self uh, motivator. Because when I come in, no one's telling me what to do today. I just have to be aware of the things that need to get done today. Um, what school was your favorite to work at? Hmm. Well, there's something uh, about each of them. Um, I've only been athletic director at one school. So, I mean, that was kind of cool because it was also a historically black college. And I don't know how familiar you all are with um, HBCUs and bands at hi historically black colleges, but like that makes game day really fun. Um, I would say Eastern Kentucky probably ranks pretty high for me because it was a small campus um, and our athletic administration was very much involved with the campus as a whole. Like I sat on university committees. I was part of the um, search committee that hired vice presidents for student affairs. That's not something that happens here at the U of A. We, we're so much larger. Um, as a department and a university that those kinds of things don't happen at this level. Uh, besides coaching, what other job opportunities are available in college athletics? Great question. So um, I'll, I'll answer that in part by telling you some of the things that report to me. I have mental health professionals that report to me. So there's a psychologist, there's a mental health coach, and there's a licensed clinical social worker in that office. We have nutritionists that report to me. So dietitians. Um, I've got athletic trainers who report to me. So people, you know, taping ankles, doing all that, taking care of our student athletes. Um, I have strength and conditioning coaches who report to me. So obviously weightlifting, et cetera. We've got academic advisors. We have uh, student athlete development um, staff members. So if you think sort of like a guidance counselor in high school, um, that's kind of what our academic advisors and uh, student athlete development folks do. We have a full business office in our athletics department. So we have you know, CPAs and we have HR professionals. Um, if you can think of a role in 
any company that's probably a version of that in athletics um, at, at this point in time. Also, um, we've got marketing staff. So the people, we got graphic designers, we have content creators. We literally have people that their entire job is creating content for social media for our sports. So if you follow Razorback um, Athletics on Twitter or Instagram or follow one of our teams, um, those uh, graphics that you'd see or video or whatever that's posted on social media, that's somebody's job here. Um, we've got a whole crew on our second floor uh, in the other wing of the stadium who are calling people to see if they want to buy tickets to our events um, and selling group sales. So we have, you know, salespeople, we have, um, we have graphic designers who uh, create the banners that are hanging around um, our, our facilities. What else am I not thinking about that we have pilots? We actually have three pilots on staff because the university has two, two planes. Um, so there are a number of jobs outside of coaching. We have about 325 full-time staff in the athletic department and only 15 are head coaches. Um, so the vast majority of our staff is not coaches. How often do you travel? Um, so with women's basketball, I try to go to at least two road games that are not postseason. Um, I used to go to more until I got on the women's basketball committee um, last year. I probably watched in the neighborhood of 100 or so women's basketball games that were not Razorback basketball. Um, so when our team is on the road, I actually will use that time. Um, sorry, Coach Neighbors just texted me. Um, <laughs> I would, I'll use that time when our team's on the road to be able to like cram in some more games that I have to watch. Um, so yeah, I don't travel a whole lot in my opinion, um, but that opinion is based on the fact that we travel a lot in college athletics. Um, I have to travel for SEC meetings. Um, we just went to a meeting in Birmingham uh, two weeks ago and literally it was like a day and a half in Birmingham. Um, in a couple of weeks, I'll travel to Dallas for uh, NCAA Women's Basketball Committee meeting. Um, so I don't travel a whole lot. Um, like the sport administrator, I'm pointing because his office is next to mine. The sport administrator for football is traveling every away game with football. Um, but as you can imagine, football is only playing 12 games um, in any year. So you're talking about tr him traveling six times or so, um, not counting postseason, whereas basketball programs play 30 games. So if the sport administrator for basketball traveled to every away game, we'd never be in our office. Um, what are the traits of the best mentors you've worked with? Um, I think the best mentors I've worked with uh, set clear expectations and boundaries um, because I think it, it, it is it has to be clear to the person being mentored um, as well as the mentor what the two people want out of the mentoring relationship. Um, some people are just looking for information, right? They just want you to tell them things. Um, I think the best mentoring relationships are ones that are bi-directional, that are communicative, right? You tell me what it is you uh, think you want or need. Um, I provide some of that, but I also tell you some things that you may not be aware of that you might want to consider. Um, so being, having good boundaries, being a good communicator, um, and setting a good example, um, I think uh, for women in particular, um, we often say yes to things when we don't have any more capacity to do anything else. So um, I think for women in particular, having mentors who will say, yeah, I, I can't do that. Um, there's not time right now. Um, and 
and letting that be okay. Like no is a complete sentence. Um, so I think setting boundaries, being a good communicator um, and probably pushing a little bit. Um, I think some of the mentors that I've had <clears throat> that I found most valuable valuable were the ones who told me I could I could do more if I wanted to. Um, and when I made the decision about whether or not I wanted to, then they pushed me to, to get out there and do it. Um, you didn't ask this question, but I will tell you, oh, what's the favorite part of your job? Oh, absolutely the students. Um, I tell people, I don't like adults that much. Um, and I'm not a morning person, so I don't like getting up early. I get up early because of the students. Um, the, the renewal that happens, um, today's my birthday, yay. Um, and I turned 56 today. And I think our students help keep me relatively young. At least I feel like I am. Um, and so they are absolutely the best part of the job um, because every four or five years, thanks to COVID, every six, um, it's a new group of people who are coming through at that same point in their life where they're trying to figure out who they are and what they want to do. Um, and for somebody who uh, is older, um, it's just a constant reminder. Thank you, Blake. It's a constant reminder um, that life is ever evolving, that you know somebody is always at the beginning. Um, and that's encouraging to me that, you know, somebody's always at the beginning and I can help, um, I can help somebody not make the mistakes I made 28 years ago. And so maybe they get to where they want to be faster than I did, um, because I told them, Hey, be careful in year four, don't do this or, um, be on the lookout for these kinds of stumbling blocks, um, career wise. So that and um, yeah, the student athlete and graduation, I mean, graduation is always, you know, uh, bittersweet because they're moving on, but they also accomplished, you know, a, a good bit of what they came for. Um, and here at the University of Arkansas, I mean, I love going to um, events, but like I've turned into a complete track geek um, since I've been at the University of Arkansas because the level of competition here is just world-class um, and to be able to um, see, you know, Olympians like every day uh, is amazing. And I never thought that I would be running along the track and cheering for a 10,000. I'm like, they are running around that track forever. There's nothing exciting about that. I couldn't have been more wrong. Uh, Mr. Gregory, tell your students, thank you very much for the birthday wishes. Um, let's see. Dun, dun, dun. See if there's anything. Else. How physically or mentally demanding is your job? Um, well, if you're a super active person, it can be a little, um, challenging because I sit in this thing a lot. Um, there is a, a lot of work to just be done. Um, I, I, Luckily, you don't see my desk because there's paper everywhere. I am not at all neat, um, but I kind of know where everything is. So there's a, there's a lot of sitting that happens. Um, so it's not physically demanding. It is uh, a lot of time. Um, we have days where I may have a 8 a.m. meeting, and then we have a basketball game that begins at seven o'clock and doesn't end until nine or 9.30, including, you know, post-game press conference or whatever. So I've left home at 7.15 in the morning and I'm getting home at 10 o'clock at night. And then there's an eight o'clock meeting the next morning. God forbid that game goes into overtime. That does not change the meeting the next morning. Um, so uh, time-wise, it is um, pretty demanding. And mentally speaking, I mean, it's tough, particularly now in this age of social media, to see people saying things on social media about the people you work with uh, in terms of coaches or the student athletes. And for me, particularly student athletes, hearing, reading, um, sometimes hearing, uh, people say really disparaging, um, unnecessarily nasty things about the young people that I work with. Um, 
and having to have the maturity not to say anything back to them um, is probably more of the, the mental aspect of it. Um, and when, when things are tough, and I'll use, for example, because we're out of that, our three-game losing um, streak that was going on in football, um, having to um, remind the student athletes as we, as I saw them that, you know, it's okay, we're, we're good, we're behind you, um, because obviously there are lots of people out um, in the public who were not talking like they were behind them and, and remembering that they're young people who are, you know, trying their, their best um, every day. Um, details of personal salary. <laughs> okay, so I will tell you, I work obviously at the University of Arkansas. There, none of this is private information. Um, all of our salaries are public. Um, and that's one thing about being in athletics that's different from just about anything else um, is we all know each other's salaries. Um, I can go right now and look up and find out what my, um, my colleague who's in a similar position as me at Texas A&M or the University of Alabama. Like I can just look and see how much they make. Uh, I will tell you, we are not paid like coaches. <laughs> um, I do not make $3 million a year. <laughs> Be nice. Um, but uh, it is, it, they're well-paid positions. Um, I uh, as a deputy athletic director, I make six figures. Um, and I've been at that level, um, when did I go six figures? Since 2008. So uh, about 14 years now, um, over $100,000. Um, there, again, take what you want, take what you uh, want, pay for it, so to speak. Um, the uh, time demands are pretty significant. So there are things that you're not going to do. There are things you're going to miss. Um, so uh, it's sort of a give and take there. I just saw a message pop up about breakouts ending. I don't know if we need to go back into another room. Um, I think we're good. We're good? Yeah, I think so. Okay. For a little bit longer, yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. Company benefits. Um, all the benefits that any University of Arkansas athletic, I mean, any University of Arkansas employee has, we have in the athletic department. So retirement plans, insurance, uh, tuition. I, I think I don't have any children. I think, um, there is a significant discount for children and dependents to, to go to school. Um, I will say there is um, every year in July, August, I get a backpack um, and that backpack comes with gear. Um, so hold on a second. But every year, I'm going to get at least one pair of shoes that are Arkansas branded, um, plus t-shirts and polos, um, things that, that for the most part, the men wear on the sidelines. Um, I'm, I'm probably wearing that more on the weekends than I am to work, um, although our, our athletic director now versus the one who hired me initially uh, is much more casual. So khakis and, and polos are okay in the office now where they weren't when I first came to work here. Um, I think, again, some benefits. We, um, you know, bowl games with football, uh, postseason with uh, the basketball and other sports. Since I have been here at the University of Arkansas, um, our women's basketball team has played in the Bahamas. Uh, we went on a foreign tour to Italy, um, which was really cool. So we were in Italy for 10 days with women's basketball. Um, and I mean, quite honestly, it's a benefit that part of my job is watching games. I mean, 
you know, there are folks who have said things to me over over time about, you know, how, oh, wow, that seems really hard. And I'm like, yeah, it is, but I'm not digging ditches. I mean, mm-hmm. I am, you know, doing some paperwork, going to some games. Uh, it takes a lot of time, but it, it's also a lot of fun. I mean, I come in each day and for some people, this is, this would be hard to live with, but I don't know what I'm walking into in any given day. Um, like this morning, I had you all on my calendar and then I got asked a question and I had to deal with something uh, before I could log on. But um, it, it's different every day. I can come in and have all kinds of things laid out on my calendar um, that I plan to do. Um, so I'm trying not to show you too much stuff, but uh, so this, uh, that's not what I want you to see. I want you to see this. Let's see if I can slide it over here. Um, so that's my calendar for this week, right? And there are things on there that I end up having to um, having to take off um, because the reality is the day gets going, something happens, and um, Sorry, now I can't get back. Um, the day gets going, something happens, and I'm not able to do something because something pops up. Um, and something pops up, and I am not able to um, get to something that was on my list because a student athlete's parent calls or um, going back uh, about 18 months something pops up COVID wise uh, because me and the staff that report to me from athletic training were in charge of all of our COVID protocols. And so if we had a sudden spike in COVID cases, like everything else got put on the back burner and we got to figure out, do we need to clean a facility? Who do we need to get involved in that? So there are people who love routine, right? They love to know that at nine o'clock every day, this is going to happen. And at noon, I'm going to go to lunch um, I've got a refrigerator in my office because there are some t- days that that's as far as I can go. Um, and, um, but, but that works for me. I'm, you know, I, I need a little bit of variety um, in order to, to feel happy. So Sid says we got five more minutes. So anybody have any other questions, things that I didn't touch on that you might want to uh, hear about before we go. And this, uh, I don't know if that's Mr. or Ms. Blanchard's class. The only reason I didn't get on any of you all because those computer monitors didn't allow me. So all I really see is a blonde young lady with the tan top and a uh, dark haired young lady with a beige top. So that you're the only people I can what sort of can see a dude in the back with a blue looks like maybe a hoodie going. Um, so, all right, my kids have a question. Okay. And it says, um, which of your classes in high school prepared you for this role, and how and why? Hmm. Which class in high school? Probably English. Um, because back a million years ago when I was in high school, um, in English, like you had to diagram sentences, um, which kind of just taught me some strategic, you know, application of rules. Um, but also uh, there were, you know, time limits on writing assignments and having to uh, figure out what I'm going to do, how I'm going to do it and get it done in a short amount of time. Um, and that's what this job is a lot of days. Um, so yeah, I'd probably say English. Um, okay. Definitely not history. Yeah, English. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't tell our history teacher that. Um, okay, so another question is, how do you handle stress in your position? How do I handle stress? Um, okay, 
you all are under 21. So um, let's see. No, just just <laughs> jokes. Um, yeah. I handle stress in a number of ways. Uh, for me, like I love music. So a lot of times it is just kind of getting immersed in, in some music. Um, sometimes I can't get away from the stress. So like uh, two days ago, I was in here working on something. And Hunter Yurchek, our athletic director, came in uh, and said something to me because I had a a YouTube channel going that was just like soft jazz or whatever, because I was working on something um, that needed to get done that I was not excited about doing, but I needed to get it done. So just having that music kind of helped me. I have um, a reed diffuser in my office because I'm real scent oriented. So when I come in, it smells like, it sort of smells like uh, actually kind of like sugar cookies, um, vanilla whatever because that helps me kind of regulate. Um, and every now and then I, I keep something out in front of me to look forward to. Um, so I will um, plan a, go, to go to a concert or plan to go on a trip um, to Panama and I'll put something up so I can just remember it's out there. Um, I'm working toward this thing. Um, because you know, gratification is not always immediate. Like you've got to be able to, um, you know, figure out. Yes, I did. I did work with Michael Vick. Um, uh, I've got to figure out, you know, how I'm going to manage myself. Um, Michael Vick's true freshman year was my um, last year at Virginia Tech. Um, and before Mike, his cousin Dwight Vick came to Virginia Tech. So I met Michael when he was still in high school. Um, and then uh, later I met his brother Marcus, but I had left the university by the time Marcus got there. Um, but yeah, Mike, uh, his true freshman year was my last year at Virginia Tech, 98-99. So he didn't play that year. He just traveled with the team to to get acclimated because he redshirted his first year. First year. Well, Miss Dorita, we thank you so much for just thank taking you. the time to talk with us. I just, I really enjoyed it for sure. So thank you so much. Sorry that I was a little tardy. Folks. Oh no. <laughs> I'm a stickler about time too, but. We understand in the education world, we understand that. <laughs> Well, thank you so much. We'll let you go get on with your day. You guys have a good one. Enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Happy birthday. Thank you. Happy birthday. <laughs>